discarding the guile look at this you guys so we normally have to discard and that's a bad thing but because we had an instant in our hand we discard it and then the brachus when it mutates brings it back into our hand which is awesome you have to be careful that you don't lose your situations in um hey everybody welcome back thanks for taking the time to watch hello good game today we're in mythic with an upgraded version of the free to play mutate deck beforehand we were using four colors to protect our creatures from removal allowing our mutate stack to build up into that auspicious sterics flooding the field and going absolutely obnoxious on our opponents maya is here she's been helping me fine tune the deck we're back down to three colors today making it you know more effective more efficient and more consistent so you know this deck is holding a 75 percent win rate in mythic it's just as strong as it used to be yes we did lose paradise druid a two drop that also added mana with hex proof this was an awesome creature to mutate on but we've got a little uh, added spice here that's not quite as easy and straightforward as that. But once I explain it, it's going to unlock your brain into unlimited possibilities within the Mutate deck here. So if you're not interested in learning all about the deck, the deep dive, talking about the strategies, the synergies, each individual card, why it was chosen to be included, the deck, the pros, the cons, literally everything that I can possibly think about, you know, jump right into the gameplay footage. There's the chapter function down below. Of course, if you guys do find any value within the video, please give it a thumbs up. That's a great way to increase my exposure. Subscribe to the channel for even more content. And it would be awesome if you shared this channel to your friends. Uh, you know, just toss a link around your group chats, etc., etc. So with that all out of the way, let's break down free to play mutate. Of course, all of my free to play decks have zero rares and zero mythics. A playlist is constructed of them all so you can check them out if this isn't your specific flavor that you want to get into because we do have uh you know basically every different archetype you could possibly think of covered this deck like i mentioned really focuses around building up your mutate stack protecting your mutate stack and then you know closing out the game with your auspicious steric so let's start at the end and kind of reverse engineer our way to the beginning the auspicious sterics is a 6-6 for five the mutate cost is six so do take note that you know some of the mutate costs are not the same as the converted mana cost of the creature whether they be less or more typically some of the better mutate cards are more and some of the less strong mutate cards are less in the auspicious sterics case it is very strong so it is more and whenever this creature mutates exile cards from the top of your library until you exile x permanent cards where x is the number of times that this creature has mutated Put those permanent cards into the battlefield this allows us to just you know absolutely flood the field with lands with creatures um there is a downside because we do have some non-land uh non-creature instances and sorceries that uh you know won't see play because they're not permanents right uh they're going right to the grave but not to worry we're able to pull them back out of the grave with relative ease so you know the auspicious sterics is what we're looking to build into Obviously, each time that we mutate, we're adding another uh, permanent out into play. And uh, this is a stackable creature. So we can actually have two Sterixes on top of one another. And, uh, you know, it will trigger each time for the uh, total amount of mutates that have occurred on that creature, which is really, really cool. So a great way to flood the field. And, um, you know, typically we do have to build that mutate stack up to take advantage, you know, of a big play because... You know, if you mutate for one and all you get is a land, that's not really great if the stack was at one. But if you can mutate onto a stack of five, a stack of six, uh, and go quite wide with creatures, that's probably going to win you the game. And uh, especially if you can do that multiple times, right? So the Auspicious Sterics is absolutely disgusting. One of the greatest free-to-play cards I've ever seen. In my opinion, this is a free-to-play Genesis ultimatum, basically. It requires a little bit more work through the building of the mutate stack, but, uh, you know, the payoff is just as powerful. So we not only need to ramp into six lands, but we need to increase our mutate stack as high as we can. So one of the greatest ways we can do both of those things is the migratory great horn. This is a card that I absolutely love to see in our opening hand. It ensures that we can, you know, get into that six land effectively, efficiently while having a mutate stack going on because, you know, the other decks, they're going to be ramping. They're going to be looking for removal. Uh, Fortunately for us, we do have protection from removal, but if our opponent is ramping, there isn't a ton of protection. We do have, you know, a little bit of disruption in the deck that we'll talk about a little bit later, 
but we don't necessarily want to use that disruption on their ramp. We want to be saving that disruption to protect our mutate stack so we can get the payoff, of course, right? So, you know, helping us get into the Sterics is the Great Horn. This is a 3 4 with uh, four converted mana costs, so pretty expensive. The mutate cost here is three. And uh, actually one of the only cards with a reduced mutate cost that I find still has a very, very nice ability. And whenever this creature mutates, search your library for a basic land card, put it into the battlefield, tap, and then shuffle your library. This is helping us ramp into the Sterix, like I mentioned. This is also thinning our library of lands, so our draw will you know, be of a higher quality pulling more creatures to mutate onto, maybe pulling that disruption or protection that we need to protect our stack. So, you know, this is great for those two reasons, but it gets even better because we're actually using the Rune Crab in the deck as our primary mutate target. This is a 0-3 with landfall, and whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills three cards. The Great Horn is allowing us to play multiple lands per turn. The Great Horn is also a stackable mutate card, uh, because it's non-legendary, of course. So, you know, you can mutate two Great Horns onto the Crab, be pulling two lands a turn, plus you're playing one organically, which is really, really good. And then, of course, you're also playing lands from your library with your Auspicious Sterix uh, ability, right? So that's very nice. It's not uncommon to play three, four lands a turn. And of those lands that we play, we do have the Evolving Wilds, comes in as a land, triggers the Crab. We can sacrifice it to grab a non-land, uh, or sorry, a basic land, from our our library right and that will trigger the crab again so you know some of those lands that we can get out with the sterix could even be the evolving wilds and you know that's going to be a massive mill off of your crab again like everything in the deck the crab is a stackable creature so that mill can you know really be increased with the amount of crabs we have in play so again playing something like the crab early on mutating onto it with the great horn uh all while protecting it and then building into your Sterix is your main goal. Uh, we can reduce the cost of all of our mutate abilities basically through the Polywike Symbiote, a one, three for two. Each creature spell you cast costs one less to cast if it has mutate. So, you know, this is reducing the cost of the creature as well as the mutate ability. And whenever you cast a creature spell, if it has mutate, draw a card, then discard a card. So the cycling of your deck is very, very powerful. The discarding can kind of be a bummer. You're not really gaining card advantage. You're just gaining quality advantage, I guess you could say, because you're getting to upgrade your cards or a chance at upgrading your cards. But where the symbiote really shines is when we combo it with Lord Dracus. This is a three CMC creature, a two, three mutate for two. And whenever this creature mutates, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. So, you know, if we have a Dracus on the stack or are casting it onto the stack of mutate creatures, with the Poliwag in play, we can be discarding the Guile, which is an instant. We can be discarding our Negate, which is also an instant, uh, and then immediately be redrawing them with the Lord Dracus mutate ability, right? So the Godzilla draws, we have to discard. We discard an instant or sorcery, and then the Dracus will immediately take that instant or sorcery from our graveyard back into our hand, which is, you know, unlike anything I've ever seen. And it makes the deck 100% viable, able to win in Mythic, fairly consistently, even without a Paradise Druid, because you're able to recycle your Guile for the Hexproof. You're able to recycle your Negate to stop the Extinction events, to stop the Ugins, which is really, really, really quite powerful. So that's the main tech there. Uh, obviously, that takes care of our Ranger's Guile within the deck. Instant speed for one target creature you control gets plus one, plus one, and gains Hexproof until end of turn. That is here to protect our Mutate stack. We also have three copies of Negate, instant speed for two, counter target non-creature spell, protecting us from removal, ideally protecting our mutate stack as a priority. With that out of the way, we do have a couple extra cards here, the Trumpeting Gnar. This costs three, mutate for five, so a very expensive mutate creature. Typically, you'll like to play this as the creature itself, not the mutate, but you never know when you top deck this. It's a 3-3, and whenever this creature mutates, create a 3-3 green beast creature token. So, you know, if we can play this for three and start mutating onto it, we're making an army of 3-3s, which is, you know, fairly good. And uh, last and surely not least is the Pouncing Shore Shark, one of my favorite mutate cards. Four copies of this. This is a five drop, a 4-3 with flash, mutate for four. And whenever this creature mutates, you may return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. So not only can we flash block, but we can flash mutate as well, which is very, very good. You know, pushing out our Sterics uh, for even more permanence in play, 
and uh, so on and so forth. So that's the deck. Of course, we do have very friendly land. Now we're down to three colors instead of four. We've cut white from it, which means, you know, four Thornwood Falls, two Rugged Highlands, two Swiftwater Cliffs, seven forests, a single mountain, six islands, and four Evolving Wilds. Again, the red is only in the deck for Lord Dracus, and you only need it to cast it as a creature. If you're mutating, you can do double island. Um, I think the land is balanced very good. I had a great time with it. Of course, if you're looking to lace mythics and, well, rares in the deck, I respect that, and I recommend that you go towards lands first, right? Get some Fable Passages in here, get some Pathways in here, and that's really gonna make it even more consistent. So, you know, that's your deck strategy and deck guide. Thanks for your time and attention. I hope you learned how to play uh, Timir Mutate a little bit better, and I hope to see you in Mythic soon, um, you know, utilizing one of my favorite decks that have come out in a while. Uh, we're upgrading it, breaking it with Negate, with Rune Crab. Uh, there's not too many changes to it. We're just trying to make it a little bit more consistent and uh, keeping that power level as high as we can, right? So protecting our creatures as much as we can with the Guile, with the Negate, cycling them back to our grave with the Godzilla and Dracus, ramping with the Great Horn, flooding the field with lands on top of the Crab, and getting our Sterics to go absolutely uh, obnoxious, right? So again, thanks for your time and attention. If you found any value, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it out to your friends. And of course, we'll be back with our wrap-up thoughts after the gameplay footage. Enjoy. We go first. We do have protection. I mean, we could start the mutate stack at three, I guess. A little slow. Slap. I don't know how I feel about that. Hmm. I mean, the Trumpeting Gnar is one of the better creatures to start the Mutate stack on. Oh. Unsummon. Not quite as insulting as removal, but still hurts. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's do that again. This time we have protection. And we can even grab it back if we have to use it, which is reasonable. There's only so much we can ask for, ladies and gentlemen. Does you dare! This is on our end step, though. We could fizzle it, and I think that's worth it. Right, because now we've dealt with the creature as well. We just have to watch out for this turn. This is where it's awkward. Do we get it back? Or is it Banana gonzo here? Oh, it's just a rewind. That's not good. <laughs> oh! Well, I think we go wide and force them to shatter. Which I don't doubt that they have. Two rewinds in a row. Holy munchkins. That's insane. Woof. Play creature. Oh, all right. Draw one's nice, but they're tapped. We're going to give them a draw again, but it creates a 3-3 three, three for us. And that's worth it. Out of 13, we have seven on board. Gadwick can tap us, and that's annoying. Flip water's in play, and um, you know probably still worth killing, but we'll just hit for three. It's a lot of mana for an Azorius control deck. They bounce our token, right? It just dies. 
Oh, no, they bounced the mutate stack. Interesting. We'll take the damage. I do not care about the damage. We'll play the shark as the creature. Tapping of our shark is a little annoying. I don't really want to bounce any of their creatures though. Oh, we just took a shatter off the top. Hot dog! Let's see if we can get a second one. Really push our luck here. I don't think we need anything specific. Mm, not much there. I must, they must have scried the shatter to the top with the omen. We're still gonna mutate, but it's probably gonna kill us. Let's make the crab uh, able to attack. Okay, we actually get the kill on the Archmage, that's not bad. So we're plenty wide. Can we avoid a shatter, right? That's the only question here. We need two turns. They just scry to the top. Here's an apparition on the Gnar. Gadwick can tap a creature on our upkeep or whatever. Or whatever. Tapping our 3-3 three, three here. But now we all untap and can bash. So that's a little awkward. I would say that's overextending a little bit just for three damage. Is an aggro deck really concerned about getting Gadwick in for three? Oh, this is good. Mutate onto the shark. Uh, we go underneath. Keep the mana cost high so the apparition can't take it. We bounce the apparition. We take the guile back to our hand. Gives us hexproof from its re-entry. And we are hitting for a bunch. And, uh, you know, free to play mutate. Mwah! Just where I left you. <laughs> Going first doesn't feel that bad. I mean, there's protection. We have a crab as well. So let's get rolling. We want a great horn right away. So, you know, maybe we risk the crab. Maybe we should protect it. Risk it, protect it. Risk it. I know that's bad, but go big or go home. Pair of the Peaks, Torbran. Oh my gosh, this is a heavy red deck. I do not look, or like the looks of that. We can block the robber, so they don't even attack. Holy. They have some stuff going on here, you guys. Over top, that royal does five damage, doesn't it? Be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. The land comes in tap, so it can be uh, whatever. Let's take that mountain. That way we go to colors in case we pull a Dracoset. Oh. Let's keep the defender up. Even though I don't think I want to block because they could attack, have us block, and then shock us. And I don't want that. But maybe if we can stop the attack because they... You know what I mean? Like, the, the fake out goes both ways. So if they don't have it, they don't want to just lose their creature. And then us having the blocker keeps them from attacking. And we're going to let it hit. I don't care about my life. But I also don't want to fall victim to this Rimrock Knight, for example, right? You jerk.
So land and play on the craft. There's the mill. Loving it. Should we just go wide? No. We can hold up and mutate this way. Over top, doesn't matter. We grab the land, we still have the gate open. Which is really nice. And we're grabbing a bunch of land on top of our crab. Which is real nice as well. Um, they're down to 32. We are at 47. I say we attack. That way, their removal is probably not being spent, and we can kind of limp around another turn. Oh, no. That's not good! Woof. The two lands are really nice, and we already have the mutate stack building. 6-6 six, six defender is also real good. And we have protection through the guile. So here's a mill for three. Here's a mill for another three. A relic robber. They are greedy. We got another land for another mill of three. I wish these were both crabs. <laughs> and no attacks. We definitely need to play defensively. We have a guile um, for hexproof plus one plus one token. So maybe that can help us somehow. Negate's also open. I'm worried about an Ember Cleave. It's a stronger blocker, and it grabbed Hexproof to bounce the shock. Oh, that Phoenix is annoying. We couldn't have countered the Phoenix anyways, though. We're gonna have to flash bounce it. So the crab in play is going to be really nice on the Sterix. And they're at 21. There's no way we mill for 21 right now. And we do have to bounce this because it has um, haste on their turn. So Putting our stop. No attacks. And turn. Yikes! I'm so scared. See? There's a negate for that. Thankfully, lol, <laughs> right? Land, that's okay. And we bounce the heck out of it. Please and thank you. Underneath. Mutate! 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 I think that this could be good, but I feel like it will actually end up being bad. Let's see how it works out, though. Hello! Planes in play. El Crab Ador. That should be his name. El, El Crab 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 Rador or Crab Ador? I think Crab Ador maybe is better. Not that it matters at all. LOL. <laughs> Anyways. Um probably just want to protect the crabs. Oh, cycling. That is a different story. We probably don't need to protect the crowds, but we still should. Um, milling a cycling deck. Hey, we get a Zenith Flare! If we can get three other flares milled, hot dog! Uh, if not, mm, little woofs, right? Um, don't stare at me. It's gonna hurt though. Fox in place sucks. Leap, bloop, blop. I do not like milling cycling decks. 
another great free-to-play deck that is uh, worth your guys' time and attention. Check it out on my channel. Quick search Hello Good Game Cycling or Hello Good Game Free-to-Play Cycling. Either or. I'm sure it'll bring it to you. Of course, I have all my free-to-play decks in the easily and uh, conveniently located playlist. You guys can just open that. Let it rip. That would be awesome. Woof. All right. Land and play. Love that. The rescuer can attack. Sucks. No blocks. We could have killed it, actually. Maybe we should have. I'm worried about a gopher blood, though. Shark is nice. Super mill. We get a second flare. Only two flares to go. Only two flares to go, and we can bounce the fox. Bounce the fox. My new hit single, Bounce the Fox. It's uh, available in, you know, all your local retailers. Second fox, so that's awkward. Oh! We need the sterics to start popping off, and to do that, we need migratory great ones. But it's like. We almost need the shark out first to start keeping some of these things at bay. It's a scary, yes. Hit for six. I think we kill the rescuer. It only makes sense. Ugh, I fall asleep. This guy's taking their time. Those are some big pooches there. Big woofers. <laughs> Cry. Really, you, man. Nobody messes with the crap. Right? We can call that a win. Oh. Oh, interesting. This was just an untapped land. <laughs> I mean, I guess the life gain's been helping a little bit. Come on, Flare. Come on, Flare. Yes! That's our third Flare! If we can mill the fourth flare and bounce all of the stuff off the board, we'll win. But this is a tall order. I'm still very nervous that there's not one sitting in their hand. <laughs> there's about an 85% chance it's there. It makes me so scared. Somehow we have to deal with Luris at a point as well, which is like a thing. <laughs> Oh, these dang foxes are just gonna whoop us to death. Don't shoot there. Double fox attack into a flare? I bet. I bet. Cry. Get out of here, cycling. Don't shoot that. Don't shoot that. They get to look for it. As well as making the foxes even more audacious. <laughs> oh my god. He's down to four. <laughs> Deep breaths. Flare 425. Oh, for 17. I caramba! We did our best, you guys. We milled three of them, but they had one in their hand to boot. And those foxes were just too much. Our land was a little too slow before we could get those sharks in play. All right, um, Great Horn opening hand is like pretty good. If we can get this red source out early, that's good. I mean, I guess we also need the forest, but the red is more rare, and we need to play a three drop before we can mutate. So, 
Just playing really slow. Um, blue land with the Shadow Spear. That's actually terrifying, if I'm being honest. Is there an Essence Scatter here? Walry's Disruption. Okay, no counter magic, no bounce spell. I'm still terrified. Please don't hurt me. Let's mutate here. There's nothing for us to take back, but whatever. Increase our toughness and strength. Or power, I should say. Grab another forest and lead bash for three. No into the royal, no petty theft. No stern dismissal. I think that they don't have the land. Godzilla in play. Land in play. Mutate onto the Great Horn, increasing our mutate stack. We also get to draw and discard. Discarding the Guile. Look at this, you guys. So we had, normally have to discard, and that's a bad thing. But because we had an instant in our hand, we discard it. And then the Dracus, when it mutates, brings it back into our hand, which is awesome. You have to be careful that you don't lose your situations in, um, in play, though, because we didn't have it in our hand, and if they had something in hand, they could have taken our Great Horn out in stack. That's annoying, but at the end of the day, that's the tech, and I wanted to show it to you guys. Ending our turn, and, well, it looks like we're ready to draw Sterix, aren't we? <laughs> Woo! Mutate! 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 No Paradise Druid, no problem. Oh my lord. Maya, you're not even showing off today. She's just sitting in the wheel. She's like, I don't want to use my wheel. I don't want to be on camera today, right? That's fine. Have you ever seen something as beautiful as this? Mutate used to be everywhere, right? It was as strong as cycling. Rotation hit. We lost Paradise Druid. I tried my best to make it work. We did make it work, but it was so complex that the average beginner couldn't wrap their head around the four color situation uh, and the priority of land drops. So we're trying to make it a little faster. We're trying to make it a little bit more consistent. And uh, I think we've done just that. The Guile, the Negate, Polywike Symbiote, Dracus. You know, there's that whole combo there. And then, of course, we're using the Rune Crab, Great Horn, into our Sterix, controlling the field with the Shore Shark and the Gnar. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? Holding a 75% win rate in Mythic. Um... You know, if you're enjoying the content, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it to your friends, check out our free to play playlist. We've got a ton of more decks just like this, uh, competing at the top levels of the game with zero rares and zero mythics, doing our best to help you guys keep the game fresh, keep your daily four wins, you know, exciting and new while still being able to save your wild cards, farm gold, and, uh, you know, begin that limited draft experience to start playing the game and farming your whole collection for free right? Um, which is really cool. So of course, check out my farming videos if you're interested in that. And we will see you soon in the next video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, support the channel by becoming a YouTube member if you want uh, access to exclusive content as well. Take care. We'll see you soon.